What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Cesar, and we are talking about four grayscale trusts today. We're going to talk about BCHG and LTCN. We'll breeze right through those ones. File G and G Soul, all at the request of Cow, Dell, and Paul O. Hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Let's get going. So BCHG at $9.82. Let's look at it on a weekly basis, weekly RSI. Yeah, it's moving down a little bit. I think that's to be expected, right? I think that's what I was calling for yesterday. Um... And that's okay, right? The rest of crypto is moving down. You might move down a little bit lower. 927 to $9 could be where you go, especially closing below your 382 like that. Once you do that, you form your higher low. That's that. Boom. Find a low in this area. Moving on up. Where are you going to move on up to? Well, hopefully, you're beginning your next move, which would be from a potential high to low here. Could send you anywhere from, I mean, what did you do last time? <clears throat> this high to low, you went all the way up to your 3618. This high to low... You went up above your 1618 and all the way up to around your 3618 on this one as well. So you like that 3618 apparently. Perhaps you're moving all the way up to $429 right now. And not right now, right? This took this took from a low point uh, in July to a high point in April of 2024, like almost a year, right? Three months shy of a year. Um, that's how long it took you. Maybe it takes three months shy of a year. We're in July now. That would be what? That would be May. Yeah, that would be May. Could be May of next year that you're up here. And that actually fits with a bunch of different things that I'm calling for, right? Maybe that is your next target, but that doesn't mean it's going to be a nonstop train up there, right? You might have consolidation nonetheless. But what I'm trying to say is this is the beginning. This is the beginning. Once you find your low right here, your, your next higher low, this is the beginning of this inevitable next move. And it'll probably take more time than that, right? It'll, it'll probably be like more something like this, but um, upwards to above $400, like genuinely. Your next more or less immediate target to expect by the end of this year, it genuinely could put you at like prices around like 150 to 245. But I, I said I wasn't gonna spend too much time on this and here I am spending time. So that's LT, that's BCHG. I think it's got a little lower to go and then it's gonna go up. <coughs> LTCN dropping a little bit more than expected, you know, expecting a drop nonetheless. I know that yesterday and the day before I was saying if I was looking to buy, I'd probably wait. I think I said I'd wait till next week is what I said. I'm going to stick with that. Wait till next week. Um, definitely wait till tomorrow. This could be your low, LTCN. That really could be your low. I don't mind it as a low. It's not perfect, but that could be maybe you move down to 1836. As long as you're holding above 1762, you're, you can go below it, but don't close below it. As long as you're not closing below this line, then I would say you don't, you're not at risk of going lower. Close below that line, that might be a little bit risky, but I don't think it will. I think I think you're very near your low, if not at your low, and you'll start to move up soon. Um perhaps it doesn't move lower. I don't know. Let's look at let's look at LTC real quick. Yeah, LTC looks fine, didn't it? Move it, it moved down a little bit. Yeah, okay. But it looks fine. It's kind of crazy, right? From a high point to a low point, it's dropped not even 10%, while from a high point here to a low point, you've dropped about 27%. So over double that. Um, I don't think LTC would drop too much more. It, it could drop more, but let's just see. From a high to a low, or a low to a high here. Come on now. Right above your 382, that that could be it, man. That really could be it. I'm gonna stick with it. You're very near your low, if not at your low. If you aren't at your low, I would expect that you find support anywhere from 1836 to 1762, and then continue to move up. Where are your next target areas? Well, <clears throat> we can talk about that, you know, every single time that I that I make the, these dang videos. Uh, from a high to a low, 75 to $112 is your next target area. But to be completely fair, let's see. High to low here, you hit your 2272, right? Pretty smack on the dot with that. From your high to low here, you also hit your 2272, right? Yes, you did. So with that in mind, perhaps 242, 245 might be the area that you're going to. That makes sense, I remember that, yeah. And by the end of the year, I would expect that. You absolutely could be above that, but that's by the end of the year expectations. You're at 1889 now with the absolute possibility of going lower, but you're very near your low. I'd feel confident buying here. I know I said wait till next week, but eh, I wouldn't blame me if you bought here, but maybe waiting till next week would be good. 
Um, time will tell. Time will tell. But anyways, that's LTCN. If if you know, not financial advice, but if you bought here, you're not going to kick yourself in the ass in a month or even in two weeks, probably. Right? You're going to be glad that you. But this is going to seem like a gift at these current prices. Um, mark my words. Not a financial guru, not a financial advisor. I do not. I do not have the ability to see the future, but that's my expectation, right? What a dump! Twenty percent down on file G. Classic, right? Just classic shenanigans with these low liquidity things. Look at all that volume that came in. Look at all the volume that came in yesterday. You didn't really move down that much, did you? It's kind of encouraging, actually. Right, like look at all this volume, you moved up 40%, but you got all this volume, you only moved down 8%. Right at your 8.862, yeah, dude, that that could be it. That could be it for file G. Somewhat of a precarious placement. I wouldn't want to see it close below 54 or 45, but it's probably does not need to respect the rules of TA too much. I'd feel comfortable buying at these prices is what I'm getting at. Right at your 0692, right at previous closing weekly periods. A lot of volume and you're not moving lower. The most volume you've seen ever in a weekly period and you're not moving lower. If this was reversed, if we were at the highs and you had a slightly lower high with more volume than you've ever seen, that'd be very bearish. Flip that, it's very, maybe not very bullish, but it's pretty damn bullish. $700, $1,453, those are your next target areas. You're at $55 now. Absolutely, I expect that you could be here by the end of the year. I'm not going to do the same thing and, and compare it to this, right, from a high to a low from the last ones because this one's so different. I don't know if you're going to see your 200 level. I don't know if you're going to break your 1618, right, because it's this was like whenever it wasn't, it wasn't as like, there wasn't as much liquidity in it. There wasn't as much volume. There wasn't as much interest maybe, but now it seems there is more. It might be harder to move the prices. I'm not going to call for a $3,250 price. It might be something worth noting, but I feel most comfortable addressing 700 to 1450. Anything from like, I don't even know, dude, that's, that's insane, right? It, by the end of this year, what would that be? From the current price, if you can even buy here, right? Cause it's got such low liquidity. If you can even buy at these prices, it's like a 12 X to a 27 X. Phenomenal. $55 right now. File G. G Soul. Then we'll finish it up. <clears throat> we got the Paul O special here. G Soul, baby. Um, moving down a little bit. Yes. How much is Solana down this week? It's not. Oh, that, that's the daily. It is. Okay. So it's down about twice. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know. I know a lot of people are asking about when the Solana ETF is going to come out, right? That's that's expected to be the next one, right? Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then the next one to talk about is like Solana, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, right? Those are in the mix. But I think across the markets, most people probably aren't thinking of a Bitcoin Cash ETF. Most people probably aren't thinking of a Litecoin ETF. They're probably thinking Solana. Um, uh, to be fair, though, most people's opinions don't necessarily matter. The people who are in charge of these institutions are the opinions that matter, right? And every single exchange, whether it's a stock exchange like Fidelity or uh, TD Ameritrade, or I, I don't know uh, what what like Webull or I don't I don't know any kind of like stock exchange when they start Robinhood itself, whenever they start uh, accepting cryptos or offering cryptos to trade, which coins do they offer? Right, which were the first coins for all of them to offer? It's always and not just not just stocks but in crypto as well they always have bitcoin they always have litecoin they always have bitcoin cash they always have ethereum that's you know what i mean so regardless of what most people think and how irrelevant they want to pretend some of those coins are uh oddly enough they're relevant enough for literally every exchange to use those as like the founding basis of trading um they all they all have those coins right like Basically, there was what was it, EDEX or what, what, what was it called that that delisted Bitcoin Cash? Which who cares? That's one one example that there's always exceptions. But I'm going off on a whole tangent here. What I'm trying to say is Solana might be the next one to have an ETF, but don't throw the other ones out of the race yet. I don't know if they're going to have their ETFs approved by the end of this year. They might have their ETFs approved not even by the end of the cycle. They might be in the discussions. It could be something that happens during the bear market. It could be something that happens during the next bull market. Really. 
time will tell. It's hard to say. Bitcoin itself, BTC, and Ethereum are some of the longest running cryptos in the space. The only one that's got a long, a long history, a longer history, I think, even than, than Ethereum would be Litecoin. So that one might be the next one up. Solana is still a new coin, you guys, right? It's still, this is its second bull cycle. It's still not even at new all-time highs. It's a very solid performer, but it's yet to stand the test of time, right? I, I don't know. I don't know. As, as strong as everyone's opinion is that it's going to get the next ETF, and maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But I'm spending too much time talking about that, these ifs, ands, and buts, whatever. But uh, from the weekly perspective, I don't mind the RSI. You could absolutely go lower from a high to low. You're right at your 382. Close tomorrow above $45.72, and I think you're absolved of going lower, or at least you stand to fight another day. If you close below your 382, you do run the risk of going down about $400, $390, something like that, and then up from there. Let's look at the daily. Daily looks like it wants to go down. I, mm, Yeah, I think it's going to go down. I think at least 428 if not 404 to 390 more probably. That's my thoughts, yeah. I could be wrong. I might be wrong, but that's my thoughts. Anyways, hit that like button, you guys. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Solana also kind of looks like it wants to move down, so that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Solana might move down right now. Oh, that, that daily RSI looks pretty damn bullish. Solana might move down because Ethereum's stealing the spotlight right now with its ETF listing. I think Solana does want to move down. I think it does. So, they had, yeah, GSOL's probably going to move down, too. We'll see around 400 to 390 is what I'm thinking. At the least, 428, but you're at 451 now. Um, Solana's been stealing Ethereum's thunder, right? Ethereum's been lackluster, but now Ethereum's in the spotlight um, with its ETF uh, stuff going on. And something I do want to address, actually, for anybody that's still here, I know I was comparing yesterday, I was comparing the Bitcoin ETF listing to the Ethereum ETF listing and comparing it time-wise. And there's some things that I've become aware of or given more thought to today that I didn't yesterday, which is that Ethereum is a lower market cap. The outflows of Ethereum from Grayscale and from other, you know, like whatever like outflows might happen, I think they're going to get swallowed up easier. It's going to be, it might be a less dramatic impact. And obviously it's the lesser market cap, but it might be a lesser dramatic impact to the overall markets than it was for Bitcoin. So not only on a percentage basis, but in a time basis, I think we might recover from this. A lot of people have their theories as to why the market's moving down. I, I'm just keeping it simple. I think it's because the ETH ETFs, got listed. that And last time when Bitcoin's ETF got listed, that was the relative high and we moved down for 12 days. I would think by that notion alone, we moved down for less than 12 days. We might even move down f for like, like we might be done, man. We might, we might be done. It, it might not even bleed into next week or it might, but I, I don't think it'll surpass next week. I think we're very near the lows for a lot of these cryptos. Um, it's just a theory because it is less significant than Bitcoin. So it might have a less significant impact, a less significant drop, a less significant amount of time because it's easier to eat that up financially speaking, right? You got the institutional players wanting to put their money into it. Maybe they put in less money into Ethereum, but it takes less money to move the needle, if that makes sense. So that's my thoughts, at least. I don't know. I could be wrong, but, you know, I might be missing something. But as always, guys, take it easy. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.